Hi, welcome to another episode of The Art of Physics. And today we're going to do something that is, uh, it's going to require a little extra action because, you know, I think you met our trainer, my trainer, Chris. Chris was here on the program about motorcycles a few programs ago. And Chris pointed out to me that um, what happens is if you do squats, then your back end kind of goes to the back. Your front has to go forward in order to give you balance. And, you know, if people are clumsy, then it's really hard for them to keep their balance. And nobody understands gravity like a clumsy man. And unfortunately, that tends to be me. As you can see from that graphic, clumsy people have their problem. And here's what it is. You have a center of mass. We all have a center of mass. And the center of mass and the support point for our body have to be aligned. And that alignment, if that alignment is perfect, then everything is fine. You don't fall over. But if you don't align those, then there can be a problem. So, um, you know, I figured since I'm clumsy, um, I would have somebody who knows all about gravity and perhaps is not so clumsy as I am come and help us out. So I invited our friend Albert Einstein. Uh, he likes me to call him Uncle Albert. Uncle Albert sometimes. <laughs> it's hard for me to say that. But anyway, I invited Uncle Albert to come and join us and say that maybe he could give us a demonstration of the center of gravity and how everything is aligned. Um, uh, evidently, I caught him at a bad time because he seemed to be unable to come. So instead of Albert himself, what he did was he actually sent an action figure, which represents him. Can you see the action figure? That's the action figure. And so I, I wanted him, Uncle Albert, to try to show us how you could bend over slightly and still keep your balance and not be clumsy and fall over. Um, so. The action figure is going to have to substitute for him, and let's see if the action figure can do this. Now, can you watch him? Here's the action figure, and he's going to bend over and see how well he maintains it. Uh, well, you know, we're going to have to go to infinity and beyond, like Buzz Lightyear used to say, in order to see if we can't straighten this out. Um, you know, there are other times that people actually pose in such a way that they seem to have great difficulty in trying to figure out where their center of mass is. Do we have a graphic for the center of mass? And you can see how that when people bend over, the center of mass actually isn't even inside the body sometimes. The center of mass is the little blue dot that they show it's there. And so, um, the uh, <laughs> in fact, it gets even weirder because sometimes people do poses that are just even worse than that, worse in the sense of kind of bent up in various ways. So here's one. This is uh, Jewish yoga. It's hala. And you can see the nice twists and turns there. Yeah, uh, you got the picture. That's what we're doing. We're going to do yoga. And what we're going to do in order to find out about yoga is we're going to go on a field trip. You can't do yoga in a television studio as well. So we're going to go on a field trip to Karma Yoga. And at Karma Yoga, we have an expert, an expert yoga teacher who's been doing this for a while and really knows what she's all about. Her name is Shelly Schindler. And so now we're going to take this trip to Karma Yoga and you'll see Shelly Schindler and she'll tell you what yoga really means. So here we go. Hi, we're back. I promised you a field trip and oh boy, did we ever get a good one. Here we are at Karma Yoga, and we're going to find out about how in the world people can stand up without falling down. Gravity is just inexorable. And in order to help us, we have a good friend of mine, Shelly Schindler, who is a yoga teacher par excellence. Hi, Shelly. Hi, honey. <laughs> she is terrific, and she will show us all what this is all about. How in the world do people do yoga without falling over, Shelly? I don't understand. It's a lot. It's simple and a lot bigger than you can imagine. I can imagine pretty big. It's pretty big. It's about our bodies and our energy and our spirit and finding that balance. Really? Oh, yeah. So where do we start? Well, we always start with the beginning. Oh. Our breath. Who would have thought that? We start with our breath. We start by breathing. We breathe very shallow. When you, we normally breathe very shallow. And our bodies are always in a state of fight or flight. Yeah. 
But when we start to let that go and start to deepen our breath and breathe in very deep and out very deep, our nervous system calms, our muscles release, and then, then, the yoga begins. I'm starting. Breathe in through your nose nice and deep, lengthening the sides of your body long. Exhale, let the breath go all the way down to your toes until you find this dance of a rhythm with your breath in and out. And that's where we begin. That is yoga. It's starting, it's pausing, breathing, and being more aware. I feel better already. You're already practiced yoga. I haven't fallen down once yet. No. Wow. So then that's it? Well, that's the beginning. Oh. Then we start working with our body, this body of our, of our material body, which is a house for this beautiful soul of ours. And we tone our muscles to the, our bones. We hug our leg muscles to the leg bones. And we hug into this great place where, where our breath originates. And then we can begin to move. Mm. Are you ready to give it a try? How's my posture, Shelley? Well, we only, we lengthen the sides of our body long, we draw the head of our shoulder blades back, and wherever we go, that's where we're supposed to be. How does it feel? Well, in college, I was in Air Force ROTC and they made us stand really straight, but somehow this feels much better. Because we want to find a soft space, not too hard, ah. not too let go, but it's the Goldilocks theory, that right place right in the middle. <laughs> Just not too hot, right. not too cold, just right. Exactly. Okay. Not ROTC and not mindless, <laughs> but that place right in the middle that feels right. And nobody else can tell you how you're supposed to feel. You know, you feel it in your body. But it helps to have somebody observe you a bit, though, doesn't it? Does. it? That's why you're going That's to yoga why classes. There are classes, aren't there? Ah, I got and it. And finding a good teacher is very important. So they can encourage you to step into your own spirit. By, via our breath and our body. I'm feeling it already. It's good stuff. Shelley, um, I've heard you talk about things that, that I don't quite understand. You talk about chakras and alignment of chakras, and I need to know what that's about because I don't know if my chakras are aligned or not. Well, chakras are the energy that's within us. It's wheels of energy that go up our spine. Actually, there's many chakras in our body, but the main ones go from the base of our spine out the crown of our head. And the energy moves up and becomes wide expanse, and that's how we know we're connected. And the energy moves down and becomes solid and manifest. And we want to keep those energies open, and that's what keeps us healthy spiritually and physically and emotionally. Oh, wow. That's what's happening when you go to a yoga class, when you stand up and breathe. No wonder it's so popular. I think I'm beginning to catch on. Would you like to try a pose? Oh, I got to try the pose. You know, <laughs> you remember our friend Albert Einstein? Uh, I, I do vaguely remember oh, that yeah. name. Nice fellow, but... Um, Where I is he? <sighs> I asked him to help us, and he uh, demurred. He said he couldn't do it, uh. so he sent an action figure uh, <laughs> in his place, and I tried to get the action figure to undertake a yoga pose. It was very simple, I thought. And the action figure, well, I'll have to show you the front part of what we did back at the studio, but the action figure had a problem, and mm. it was very simple. I mean, it was just a case of standing straight, upright, everything's fine, everybody's aligned, we're all in good shape. From a physics standpoint, the center of mass acts right down through the support point, so we're not going in any odd direction and so forth. So I asked Einstein's action figure if he could bend over. I mean, it seemed easy enough, just bend over. Just bend over. And? and? So I think I can bend over. It's beautiful. Well, there's bending and there's bending, right? Yeah. Now, when I asked Einstein's action figure to do this, he fell down. Hmm. But I'm not falling down. Is it because I have a yoga mat? I don't think so. What is it then? Well, I think it has to do with energy and muscles and consciousness. Because if you're not conscious, you might fall over. 
But if you tone up your muscles and stand up tall and mindfully fall forward fold, you reach your heart this forward. This is called forward fold? Would, this is called forward fold or Uttanasana in Sanskrit. Whoa! So this is a beautiful forward fold. Take your, put your hands at your shins. And that's a beautiful forward fold. But with regular practice, you find you'll be able to go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper, and after a time, maybe deeper. And maybe eventually you can take your fingerprints to the floor. And Shirley, maybe, how can you do that? Well, because I've been doing this for many years. Oh, geez. Maybe eventually you can take your palms to the floor. Maybe eventually you see this? you'll take your head towards your thigh bones. It looks like it's something very miraculous, but actually it's in all of us. All we need to do is practice, breathe, and pause and find our deeper consciousness. Simple. Simple? Not easy. Not easy, simple, but not easy. Where in the world does this come from, Shelley? I mean, what, what's the source of all this? Well, this is an ancient practice, thousands of years old. It started in, uh, in the Indus Valley thousands of years ago. And actually, the poses today that we know today have really evolved. The ancient texts don't mention a whole lot of poses. But as it has evolved and it went from just from the priestly class to the householders, it's evolved to be fuller and expand so that more people can practice. Mm. It used to be just for men. Imagine that. It's and hard now to imagine. It's for men and women and everybody. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It is amazing stuff. So it's physical, but it's more than physical, isn't it? Oh, the physical is just a little part of it. Where our our spirit is called Purusha. Our Purusha is deep within all of us. And it's covered, it's housed in this Prakriti, the material world of our Whoa. body. I thought physics had big words. Did you hear those? Well, they're not English. They're Sanskrit. Ah, that's it. Yeah. You write Sanskrit? I do not write it. Oh, okay. But I can hear it. And I know what, I, what we mean when we say a word, because every word has lots of layers of meanings. And so we study it again and again, just like our physical body, to get into deeper meanings of the language and our bodies and to know ourselves. So that when we step off the mat, that's when the yoga really begins. <laughs> so that we learn to pause and take a breath and expand our consciousness. Shelley, this is a way of life. It is. It is. We learn how to act instead of react. Wow. It's beautiful stuff. It's changed my life, and it could change anybody who practices it. Just you first have to take a step into it and begin. So this is a step. There you go. I've and taken a step into it. And here you are on my mat. And I feel good. This is right. a good feeling. I know. I love, I love when I see students when their eyes get big and they're so surprised that they feel so good or that they can start to do something. It's, it's really a magical moment. We call that a revelation. Ah, <laughs> we make little changes, and those little changes we make lead, lead to bigger changes in the rest of our life. In our physical body, we feel it, we step off the mat, and then we do things differently. Instead of doing the same thing again and again, that's called samskara. Our old habits, we step out of them, and we do one little thing different, and then the next time around, the whole thing is different. Yeah, samskara, or what they say in English, obviously English, you know the, the uh, definition of insanity. Is that repeating the same thing, expecting a different result? Right, and so yoga helps you do something oh, a little different. You do a little different, you get a different result. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes real good sense. Wow, this is amazing. Thanks so much for inviting us here. Oh. I sure appreciate it. I this. so love being here, Art. <laughs> you know, I think I'd love to talk about more than yoga and karma yoga and practice and encouraging people to get onto their mats and uplift their lives. <laughs> but there's a lot more to this gal than yoga. So I'd like to sit down and talk to you about some of the other things in your life. Would you be willing to do that? Let's do. Okay, thank you.
Well, Shelley, let me tell you. There's so much more to you, I don't know where to begin. Except, I usually Google guests on this program so that I can find out what they're all about, Google-wise, because then the world knows through the internet. But I've known you for so long that I didn't need to Google you. Instead, I supplied David with some pictures. And the first picture he's going to cut in right now is so, so the viewers can see it, and I'll show it to you. Do you recognize that oh, picture? Oh, yeah. And uh, what's that a picture of? That is my first, our first group bike trip <laughs> in the Thousand Islands in Canada. It that was. was really wonderful. I love riding my bike. I love the freedom and the feeling of it. And, and you have to be conscious because as soon as you lose your consciousness, as soon as you get distracted, all kinds of things could happen to you, <laughs> no right? Kidding. Yeah, how well I know. Yeah, oh, so it's all related to being balanced and being conscious and being present. Some of these people in the picture actually were on an earlier program. Ah. They were called biker chicks. Those are my, those are my gals. <laughs> the biker chicks. Those are my peeps. Well, David's going to show you another one of another trip a couple years later. Oh, yeah. And it's you and your husband, Mark, and you don't seem to have a bicycle. What's the deal? Yeah, well, we made the mistake of shipping uh, our bicycle for the trip from America to Canada, <laughs> and it went through Montreal, and the French did not want it to come in because they wanted uh, taxes on it. They thought we were selling it. And my French isn't very good, and I couldn't convince them that we were there for a bike trip. <laughs> so um, the seats came to Cape Breton, and the bike went to... Um, Yugoslavia. No, it went to the east. Oh, wow. East. The way east. Um, Newfoundland. My oh, bike was geez. in Newfoundland. It had a fabulous trip, by the way. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Then um, the next one, actually, your bike arrived, and yeah. you're riding a tandem. Yep. And Barbara and I often ride a tandem bicycle also, so tandems are fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to learn how to get along, and someone's got to take direction, and someone's got to give direction. Right. In fact, your husband, Mark, told me that he thought that tandem bike was a marriage saver. So yeah, it's, it's a wonderful that, thing. It yeah. can be. Sure and it's is. nice to be together. And it he is. can't go ahead of me, and I can't slow down. <laughs> it's perfect. Exactly. Now, the next picture that David's going to cut in for the viewers at home uh. looks like a, another bicycle trip. This one was yeah. in Montreal, uh. back in Canada. And those people, what were, they, what were you doing in that picture yeah. anyway? We were just schmoozing. After a long day of biking, we probably rode, I don't know, 40, 50 miles that day. We were just unwinding and having fun. But is that see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil? Well, it's trying to. You see, we do our what, best. that's what yoga does for her. It allows her to do that. Well, we do talk about the power of words quite a lot in yoga. There's a <laughs> word for it, actually. It's called matrika shakti. Whoa. It's words as little mothers. Little mothers. Yeah, because words, every word we speak is the seed to an idea in somebody else, a feeling, doubt, joy, sadness. Wow. Words are very powerful. So we want to be careful of what we listen to. We want to be very careful about our words and maybe even what we look at, too. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Our senses give us all that information. So yeah. Shelley does all this bicycling, and so you think, well, that's just another facet of her life. But that isn't quite right, because actually she combines the facets of her life. So the next picture that Dave is going to show you is going to be a picture of Shelley in the Frankfurt airport, and she's <laughs> meditating. Is, wouldn't you call it meditate? Don't tell my meditation teacher that, because oh, it sure looks like I'm sleeping. Oh, no, no, that's meditation. You're yeah. just resting your eyes. <laughs> yeah, just resting my eyes. And the thing about this is that this actually was a few years ago, and I learned even then from Shelley. So look at the next picture, uh. and you'll see how, <laughs> how much I learned, and uh, then you realize what this is all about. Uh. Well, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, there's another job that you do that yep. David is cutting in, and, and this is Brody's Custom Printing, and you're the marketing queen. I am indeed. We have a family business. We sell custom t-shirts and sweatshirts and spirit wear <laughs> at our store at Brody's Custom Printing in West Bloomfield. Wow. And I do my best to make sure everybody knows how fabulous it is. So you got to add that to Shelley's list of accomplishments. So then the next thing he's cutting in is uh, something that looks oh. kind of uh, spiritual almost. Yeah, two of my very favorite little people. <laughs> Two of my grandchildren, my older two, they are my best teachers. They are the loves of my life. As a matter of fact, my little granddaughter, when she was three, I was putting her to bed, and she couldn't read yet, and she was fumbling with the books, and she said, Nana, I'll read it. She was putting it off. So I said to her, Ellery, I'm losing my patience. And she looked at me, and she said, Nana, be patient. <laughs> 
That's how she got the title, my little teacher. Super Nana. That's my teacher. Yeah, that's it. Boy, it works too, let me tell you. Well, you know, I feel sort of badly, Shelley, because um, I've been beating up on Einstein, and this is the uh, Einstein, this is the action figure that Professor Einstein sent and in his stead, and uh, so I've been kind of beating up on him, and this is, this is maybe it isn't very nice of me, so Professor Einstein, I, he asked me to call him Albert. So Albert, I'll tell you, um, let me close with something that you said that I'm going to paraphrase, but I think you understood yoga really well. So if David will cut that one in too, here's what Einstein said. A human being is part of a whole, but he experiences himself as separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. We must widen our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures. That's does, that, sure. does that ring a bell oh, with yoga? As soon as we see that we're all connected, or as my teacher says, I'm not you, I'm like you, <laughs> I'm nothing but you. What a way to say it. All right, so let me close with a special way of closing. This is the way the yogis do it. They say, The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Namaste. And to you viewers out there, until next time, I'm still Art Wiggins, but I say to you, Namavu. The light in me recognizes the light in you. <laughs>